I remember seeing one photo of about 300 that my nan took on holiday, and it was of my granddad in a pub, and he was eating spare ribs. The juice is dripping down his arms, and he's looking straight at the camera over the top, whites of his eyes. It's just everything I love about him. I saw that photo out of 300 and just thought, that's what I want to do. That's photography. My dream when I was 21 years old, working for an insurance company on a complaints line, was just to make a living taking pictures. And fast forward a few years and hard work in a studio on a high street and eight and a half thousand sessions of babies and families and toddlers and children later, you have the opportunity to create a niche within that. Initially, the goal was just to get an image on a poster. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to shoot something creative, something different, something cool, something that, that would appeal to someone like me. I think the moment when I first decided to make the jump and take portraits of wrestlers was when I, I just saw a tweet. Um, from a well-known photographer. One of their followers asked him, how do you take pictures of celebrities? And his response was, I ask them. My first wrestling shoot with a gentleman called Chris, who goes by the ring name of the Fearless Flatliner. I saw this article and just contacted the newspaper and said, look, this is my number. Tell him to call me if he wants to have a photo shoot. And five minutes later, the guy called me. <laughs> I'll never forget the call. He said, yeah, come pick me up Thursday first caravan on the left picked him up he's like a bouncer and he's got like this bleached beard and like piercings all over and just the story's told by the time he got home he'd recommended me to two other wrestlers those two other wrestlers recommended me to two other wrestlers and off to the races we went on my first show I wanted to do a project where I photographed them immediately after the match no posing no direction and I just wanted five seconds of their time the pictures were just one light the background was just like the store cupboard door, which was all gritty and black and woody and broken. I had one guy who couldn't get a splinter out of his eye. I can't tell you how much it's changed my life. It's allowed me to forge friendships that I know will last a lifetime. One of the biggest commitments I made to my business was to invest in an L-series lens, and it was a big risk at the time. Money was tight, and you've just gone self-employed. And as a photographer, the images sell you, and the quality of the images sell you, and it's probably one of the best investments I ever made. Canon lenses are, have been entirely flawless. There's a reliability in the focusing, in the speed, and in the sharpness that, in the back of my mind, gives me one less thing to worry about. I'll try and do things differently from what everyone else is doing. I'll take a super zoom lens, try and create shapes, try and create different compositions, and try and create a different style that sets me apart from everyone else. I call it creating a perfect storm. So it's when all of the elements come together, and like it tends to happen in the middle of a shoot. You, you kind of build up towards it, but you can't go on too long trying to chase it. I learned a long time ago that you only get one shot and you owe it to yourself to follow your dreams. And at this moment, photography's never been more accessible. So if you have a vision, if you have a passion, and if you can tell stories, and if you're happy to continue to learn, continue to develop, and you're an open book, anything's possible.